the BRICS summit was hugely significant, hugely impactful, and yet it's reported in the West as Russia is attempting to show to the West that the sanctions don't and the international isolation, quote unquote, which is Western isolation of Russia doesn't matter. Um, I guarantee you that zero people who attended this BRICS conference gave a shit about how it played down in the West, um, which should tell you something. Yeah. Um, so some quick facts about BRICS before we... Uh, get into the meat. I want to talk about the snub of Venezuela in particular, yes. but uh, BRICS was started with Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa last year. Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and the UAE were invited. Uh, this week, 13 partner countries were accepted, including Algeria, Belarus, Bolivia, Cuba, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Nigeria, Thailand, mm -hmm. Turkey, Uganda, Uzbekistan, and Vietnam. So this is rapidly expanding. Um, it's beginning to look like a coalition, uh, which is reminiscent of, um, you know, the Soviets and, 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 and getting the band and, back and global socialism and global socialism at the time, because it is uh, becoming so large and uh, a major marking a major shift in uh, world power. Um, there is some reason to be um nervous about this uh and not to put too much hope in, in my view in my personal view um because mm -hmm. what happened at the BRICS summit which again shows uh shows the lack of uh isolation which the US tried to impose on Russia uh, because it took place in Russia but um one of the founding members uh Brazil their president, Lula da Silva, did not show up at the summit. Um, he uh, claimed that last minute that he could not go because he fell in his house and hurt his head. So th that so he was he was not there. Um, again, Brazil being a founding member. Uh, th the next day, he's back in the office. Uh, um, and this is from Tassim uh, on Twitter, by the way. Um, but he's back in the office looking fine, big smile on his face. Um, and Tassim writes, the official reason Lula missed the BRICS summit in Russia was due to an accident and health issues. Yet less than 24 hours after his historic betrayal was announced, his Twitter is buzzing and he's back in office with a big smile. That historic betrayal is not referring to uh, Lula um, missing the summit. That is referring to... Brazil's veto of uh, Venezuela joining the BRICS alliance. So the way that BRICS works, and this is why I say there are some problems, um, is because mm. is that all of the countries that are a part of it have to accept uh, new members. They all have to be in concurrence. And so one country rejecting Venezuela, for example, is essentially a veto, um, which I think... Um, because BRICS is designed as being a big tent, uh, could could uh, could lead to some problems down the line. So the reason that Lula rejected Venezuela's admission is because he has not accepted the results of the election. So he's claimed that when the opposition in Venezuela has uh, sent him uh, the results of their of the vote. Uh, there's been problems with that. And when the government has sent them results, there's been problems with that. So I think it's quite rich of a guy who was um, the victim of a coup to yeah. Yeah. Uh, now. Now, yeah. uh, my thoughts, you know, my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts, my, it's like, it's my thoughts exactly. And like, I like, um, I do. So I, I'm just trying I, to pull up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly. I mean, I do think, I, do, I mean, I do think that like, yeah, that, that that Lula has since since his election win, which like was historic, and like already he's back to work, like doing amazing things for like the average Brazilian citizen, which is to be recommended. Um, he's still playing it very safe, and that might be a result 
of the fact that, yeah, that he basically got cooed and jailed as a result of a CIA FBI um, conspiracy called Lava Jato. Um, he has quite uh, quite plainly since since taking office been very 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 careful um i mean i don't think there's any excuse for that now um particularly as we'll get into i mean we're seeing the weakness of the empire like everywhere um it might be because brazil remains the most significant powerful politically and economically country in latin america uh the us's historic backyard um, that he is playing it safe, but I don't think there's any excuse for it. Um, yeah, and I actually think I, I think that he's doing himself and his nation and the wider region an enormous disservice by breaking ranks um, on Venezuela. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm going to read uh, Venezuela's response or portions of it uh, about about this fiasco. Uh, Venezuela, which not only has the largest energy reserve in the world, but also represents the values, principles, and visions of building a fair, multi-centered, and multipolar world, has had the backing and support of the countries participating in the summit to formalize its entry into the in, this integration mechanism. Um, so that's, of course, like uh, them basically saying, we'd be a huge asset for BRICS with our you know massive oil reserves and our uh, ideological commitment to um to the ideology of bricks uh through an action that contradicts the na nature and postulate of the bricks the representative of the brazilian foreign ministry uh decided to maintain the veto that bolsonaro applied to venezuela for years reproducing the hatred exclusion and intolerance promoted by western power to prevent for now the entry of the homeland of simone bolivar into this organization in an action that constitutes the aggression against venezuela and is a hostile gesture adding to the criminal sanctions policy imposed against a brave and revolutionary people like the venezuelan people mm. so don't i disagree. think it's really interesting go ahead don't disagree. yeah I don't disagree. it's a strong statement yeah. um yeah and it you know I'm, I'm glad that you uh noted that this region is historically considered uh the u.s's backyard um the Mon monroe doctrine uh yeah. because we have a a uh new diplomat in town and i'm gonna play this oh this no video because i think it's oh um, no well <laughs> just let me set this up here now about brazil and what Brazil thinks about what's happening in Venezuela. We know um, Brazil's stance. Our positions do not coincide with Brazil on the matters of, uh, of Venezuela. I'm saying that openly. We've spoken about that on the phone with uh, the day before yesterday with the president of Brazil. I have very good and I believe friendly relations. Venezuela is fighting for its independence, for its sovereignty. At a certain point in time, I remember that the leader of opposition after the last elections, he stood on on the plaza before uh, the government and believes that he believes that he's a, a president by the by the will of God. Isn't it laughable? But if you discuss the situation with the leadership of the U.S., well, they've supported that opposition leader. They continue to do that. Well, well, they just uh, shrugged it off as well. They smirked, and it's clear that it's ridiculous. Any person can um, raise his uh, eyes to the overhead and, and say that he's uh, a pope or something like that. Well, it cannot happen like that. There are certain electoral procedures um, go and run in the vote. We believe that President Maduro run fair and square. He uh, founded a government, and, and we wish him and and his government every success as well as to the venezuelan population but we truly hope that brazil and venezuela have a bilateral discussion and find a, a solution to their bilateral relations so that's vladimir putin who has uh suggested since that he will uh be working with both uh brazil and venezuela to mediate um he said we know Brazil's position. We don't agree. Venezuelan, Venezuela is fighting for its sovereignty and independence. 
Um, I actually found a BBC article that covered this and they translated sovereignty and independence into just survival, which I thought was quite rich. Um, mm. But uh, Daniel Ortega, the uh, president of uh, Nicaragua, uh, has denounced Lula da Silva for this. Uh, obviously, Venezuela is quite unhappy. Um, it should not be forgotten that Maduro, Ortega, uh, the president of Cuba, who's just been admitted into BRICS, uh, these are all people who um, fought against his, mm. his against Lula's uh, imprisonment. The, the the coup that took place against Lula in, initially. So it is, I'm sure, seen as quite the betrayal um, because mm. these are all people that supported him and now he's kind of stabbing him them in the back. Um, I do think that the admission of Cuba into BRICS is a huge development because um, the situation in Cuba has been very bad for quite a long time. And it has seemed to me that uh, the revolutionary project there was on its last legs uh because of you know the 50 year economic blockade uh the impossibility mm. of getting anything into the country of having any kind of um meaningful uh progression when the you're not allowed to have an economy uh so the admission of cuba into BRICS is massive and it may be what saves the revolutionary project there i i i really want to emphasize that because i think it's very important mm. um so we'll see what what kind of progress uh putin the diplomat can can make between brazil and venezuela uh that remains to be seen but i think for now um while a very positive development in terms of building a multipolar world there are reasons that i mean and like like turkey was accepted into BRICS, so you know um, you know, maybe it's a situation of keep your friends close and your enemies closer, but, um, there, th it's not a flawless paradigm. No, no. And I mean, I also think as well that like, I mean, we, we just, 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 um, uh, if you could get the, uh, the, the, the um, Reuters article up, Alex, like, I think that like, that there is an, there is an element of wish thinking um, on it, like within anti-imperialist circles. And also like, we're just, I mean, within the left, like more widely, that like BRICS is going to be the alternative to the US empire, as in it's going to be its, um, be, be the end of, of Washington, Washington's hegemony. Um, it is, but it's going, it's, it's not going to play out as BRICS being the perfect replacement um for um the unipolar world i think that what china and russia are quite clearly building is an alternative to the current um system that will operate in tandem with the current system so <clears throat> alex has now got up this this reuters article um, is this the one that you wanted I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. This no, is the right perfect. article. Okay. It, it, All right. No, no, you, 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 no, you, you've done well. Um, like, like carry, carry on going down. So basically, yeah. That, so I, I, I have uh, lag on my the, end. No, that's all right. That's okay. But like, so, so basically, like, BRICS is currently. Go they ahead. They are setting Go ahead. up. They, they, the BRICS is setting up a commodities exchange. Um, which is in order to allow its members and associates to trade resources um without using the dollar now this is much more significant than BRICS building an alternative to the dollar um at least if you're like one of the countries that's affected by this so it's like i mean as again um alex and i have discussed like many 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 times the um uh, one of the ways in which countries in in the global south global majority countries are are kept in a state of kind of indentured servitude is because the uh, the empire and its vassals they strip out um raw resources um and then get the profit from selling them and then a tiny fragment of that like a tiny 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 um uh, sliver of what gets sold makes it back to the producer countries. Now, um, Russia is moving towards setting up some kind of international trading system that will allow resource rich countries to trade with, with each other without using the dollar as um, their 
uh, it, 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 without using the dollar as the currency in which which this is traded. Now, this is a much more significant development than um, BRICS adopting a, a, a currency, a central currency, which there's been a, a lot of very at times kind of frenzied talk about within within independent media circles. Um, I can't see that happening for quite a, quite a while because the infrastructure isn't there. Um, but 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 something like this, it's a small but significant change um that uh yeah i mean it, 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 it is threatening to the u.s dominated system but it's not going to translate into the creation of a parallel or comparable global BRICS empire as some people seem to think is going to happen um i think has happened um in some cases so yeah like it's like like little data points like this they they do point to wider u.s decline but it, it, I think, yeah, as I say, there is an element of wish thinking in people believing that BRICS is the answer or the replacement to the US empire, because that's not its purpose. Like, like you know, China has not set out to replace the US empire. It seeks to operate in, uh, in parallel um, for the most part, like China's expansion overseas, um, countries are free to pursue uh, uh, economic engagements with the US if they wish, um, but China's not going to try and stop them. Um, I mean, of course, the US would like try and stop them. So, yeah. but, 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 but uh, yeah, it, they're, they're not like kind of coming to rescue everyone, <laughs> like as, as seems to be a quite prevalent view in certain quarters. Yeah, I, th I think that the hope of BRICS, uh, to put it realistically, is to have a fairer global trade system yes. and to allow for the um, development of, uh, as would you call them, world majority countries. Um, yes. What we traditionally call cl global south. Kit's got a new term for it. Um, yes. But uh, more, more democra a more democratic term. I like but, it. I'm but, using it. Yeah, sure. Go. <laughs> but uh to to allow for their development. I mean, I, I I liked the little um uh context that you gave about how natural resource rich countries aren't getting I mean, you look at the coffee industry, right? Um yeah. a lot of uh labor is put into you know the harvesting of uh, of coffee. Um that is not paid off. It's the it's the packagers that make the money, um, yeah. and so so yeah, creating a fair global economy uh, is um, the probably the goal of BRICS and what it's capable of achieving. Um, it is not you know going to save the day and overthrow the U.S. government and uh, you know bring about a centuries of world peace. Um, yes. So I think that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, I mean, again, it's like, I mean, I do think that you gotta bear you gotta bear in mind as well that like BRICS as a term, I mean, you talk about my deployment of global majority. Um, I mean, I do like it because it's it's yeah, as I say, more democratic. Like BRICS as a term was invented by Goldman Sachs. Yeah. Like that we Not shouldn't right. we shouldn't be using that either. Like it's a fundamentally imperialist construct. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's and, and it was created to apply to emerging market economies for investment purposes, um, even viewing um, the BRIC summit as inherently like, yeah, a BRIC summit is to uh, give uh, the the imperialist the the edge. Um, in you know in 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 debate so yeah I mean, although this said um, overall I do think that the the the, the fact that this summit went ahead and the fact that there were significant um agreements um inked um they point to a new future which is you know is that the new frontier is here whether we seek it or not hey everyone um if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content uh please give us a follow on twitter or subscribe to us on youtube it will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs thank you